Hi, I'm Mary Director and I'm a Fun Stampers Journey Coach. Let me tell you a little bit about myself before we get started. I have a blog, it's createscardsjourney.blogspot.com. My business website is funstampersjourney.com slash Mary Director. And I'm also on Facebook, facebook.com slash createscardsjourney. And I'll bring this back at the end of the video. Today I'm going to do another way to, another technique to show you how to create mirrored images. The video I did yesterday used an acetate sheet and this one I'm actually going to use our gel press and here's a sample of the gel press one and as you can see the designs are very very similar. Um, you may find the gel press one a little easier to do. It's totally up to you but I want to show you some different options. I'm going to be using the Stay Wild stamp set. It's AT-0207, and it's one stamp, um, forest with some elk or moose down here. I'm also going to be using an acrylic sheet um, or a worksheet. This is the uh, flexible sheets that your stamps come on when you receive your stamp sets and you can either keep your stamps on them or you can take the sheet and use it for other things. I just cut it down to five and a half by four and a quarter so it's the same size as one of our card fronts. Then I've taken a sharpie and I've put a dark border around so that I have a template now for my card front. Because I'm using the gel press, I do have the acrylic sheet on the back that it came with. If you do not have the acrylic sheet, you don't have to keep the acrylic sheets for that. Take the um, Sharpie side and put it ink side down, so flip it, so that this Sharpie ink isn't up against your gel press. We don't want to take any chance of this ink transferring. I don't know for a fact that it would, but why take a chance? Because I have my acetate sheet, I can leave this with ink side up. So the acetate sheet's in the bottom. I'm going to put this underneath, and with having our grid paper, I can line it up pretty straight. I'm going to use our True Color Black Licorice Ink. And again, our True Color Fusion Inks on sale this month for 20% off for, during the month of August. So that's a great deal if you need ink so many colors to choose from too. When I did the mirrored image, we took part of the image off the edge of the paper. So I want to do the same thing when I stamp it. Now this, I'm going to stamp as is as if this is the top of the card. I'm going to press gently. There's going to be a little bit of give because we're doing it right on the gel press, lift straight up. If the image isn't as straight as you would like, you can um, adjust the gel press just a little bit. Or you could take a uh, baby wipe, clean this off, and then do your image over. Okay, so this is going to become the bottom of the card. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put this on and then I'm going to apply firm pressure all over this so that I get the full image. Then I'm going to lift it up. Look how great. Put my cap back on or the cover back on my ink. And then I try to clean my gel press as I go along. Uh, and is um, so that there's no chance that I, um, you know, pick up another image on, on a new card, you know, a previous image. So I just use a baby wipe. I use the ones that don't have any alcohol in them and um, clean this as, as you can see, it's got a little bit of ink on it, but not a big deal. Get that all cleaned up. And then usually what I do is just take a paper towel and just pat dry. Don't leave your paper towel on here because these paper towels have texture to them and you don't want that texture to transfer to um, your, your card. Okay, so we're gonna put the gel press aside, the acetate sheet aside. 
<clears throat> and as long as we're here, we're gonna go ahead, gonna clean up our stamp set. Black seems to be the one ink that can stain your stamps, and especially if you um, leave it on too long. So I try to clean them up right away. This stamp I have used and used the last couple of days. So it's been definitely um, loved and <laughs> um, it's, got, it's got a little bit of staining to it. I never, that never really bothers me. I just try to keep them, you know, as clean as possible because this has so many nooks and crannies in it. You can't help but get some of the black ink um, you know, inside there. Again, I'm using the True Color Fusion Cleaner. It comes in a two ounce bottle. This cleaner's fantastic. It does a really good job with our stamps. And I'm just using, um, this is actually a car chamois. You want a lint-free cloth. And then um, I just rinse it out at the end of the day and put it up in a locking container. I'm gonna dry this a little because I'm gonna use the stamp next. Okay, so here's the image that we pulled off the gel press. I'm gonna turn it upside down and it now becomes the image, the mirrored image for our um, card. I'm gonna re-ink the stamp. I probably didn't need to clean the stamp off like I did because I'm using it right away, but that's okay. I'm gonna do this. Now, I want the water to match up. So the water's here, the water's here, the little pool of water. So I'm gonna try to match that as well as possible. I'm gonna push it straight down and with the acrylic blocks, it makes it so much easier to line things up. So here's my stamped image, here's my mirrored image. And I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna clean the stamp set again real quick. Because we're done using it uh, for now. Then, um, as I did before, I'm going to use the pen pastels to create my background. And I'm j I'll just do a little bit of it because the video yesterday showed the complete um, technique for um, doing the, com the, you know, the full sunset and water, but just to give you an idea with this. Now, the difference is when I used my acrylic sheet, I did the background first, then I did the stamping. With the gel press, I'm doing the mirrored image first, then the regular stamping, then I'm bringing in my pan pastels, and this is Party Pop, and I'm going to work on my background. I'm going to use the sponge. And what I like to do when I'm doing the water is I like to come in and create a little bit of a divide line. So I'm going to use the black and I'm just going to go across here. I'm not going to keep it straight. I'm just going to bring in some, you know, texture, dimension to the area. I want to take the lid off that. Oh, one thing I did mention yesterday in the video, let me bring it up now. The cap is on here, so if you want to stack your pan pastels, this is a lid for it. If you're going to do that, though, don't, don't put the, um, dab the daubers on the bottom because you don't want, um, that won't allow you then to um, screw these together. But see, they just hook in right together. And then if you're gonna take them, um, they're already contained, you don't need the palette. I like keeping mine in the palette so it's a personal choice, but um, it's up to you how you wanna do it. I like being able to see what colors I'm drawing from. And so if you stack them, and then put the lid on top, you can't see your colors. So again, it's a personal choice and what you wanna do. I'm gonna just work on the water. I'm gonna bring in a little bit of the blue here, the lighter blue, which is the beach breeze. And 
and just going to pat this off on the side. And as you can see, there's I've used these lots of times. As long as you pat this, you won't get color um, contamination, and it pretty much stays the color you are using. But again, you want to um, you want to pat this off, and it's not rubbing; it's patting it before you pick up the next color. Remember too, when you're using your um, Pan pastels. If you start getting dust on these little um, little pots, little containers, then um, you've used um, too much pressure, or you're picking up too much of the um, pan pastel on your sponge. So that's just a tip for the day. But see how easy it was to create the water with that. So I'm just using lemon drop, beach breeze, and beach ball of the Pam Pastel colors. And again, this is in the Party Pop. Then when I'm ready to do the sunset, I'm gonna turn it, I find it's easier to turn it upside down and then work from this up. And then, here's the other one. Then what I did at the very end, I went ahead and I used my Journey Glaze. Let me see, we're, we're at the, 11 minute mark. Let me just real quick then, um, I did the sunset, then I went in and I used the Journey Glaze to add the look of water, the look of maybe like the wind going over the water. So there's a little bit of glisten, it adds texture to this. And it's the same thing I did in these two cards. This one I framed using the uh, rectangles. This one was framed with um, our sparkle washi tape, our licorice sparkle washi tape. Just remember if you use washi tape this way that when you put washi tape over itself, it will not adhere. So on these corners, I had to use a little bit of our Journey craft glue so that it would adhere um, and keep the um, washi tape in place. So anyway, um, that's the um, card. I'm not going to finish this one because it's the exact same technique I showed in yesterday's video. I really appreciate you watching my videos. And if you'd like to purchase any Fun Stampers Journey products, my business website is funstampersjourney.com slash Mary Director. Thank you.